Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Today's the big day. Michigan Central Station opening back up, and it's going to be a huge party. Oh, it certainly is. And then it's your chance to get inside the newly restored Central Station that opens tomorrow. Uh, we'll be filled soon with big stars tonight as we celebrate Detroit. Thank you for joining us on this special day here on June 6, 2024, a day we'll always remember. Yeah, happy Thursday indeed. Uh, Ford, as you know, spent the past six years renovating Michigan Central Station to the tune of a billion dollars. And the celebration expected to last a few days now, as Rhonda was talking about. Let's get out to Rod Maloney, who's live out there today, where crowds already starting to gather, Rod. Well, yeah, in fact, the people, the first people for the concert are here in line. They got here at 2 o'clock in the morning. But let's just take a look at Michigan Central Station, resplendent now with its gorgeous windows. And, of course, you can even see out just in front, the columns are spectacularly well done. Um, I'm going to date myself here in that. I was here six years ago when... Governor Snyder and Bill Ford first announced what they were going to do. Seems like yesterday, although six years is a long time for any renovation. But when you consider this place was worse off than they even imagined and they had to do all of the work they did, um, it really, really puts an exclamation point on the celebration that they're going to be having here in about eight hours. Right up uh, on the front of the stage there, you can see a group of people, Jim Farley, CEO, of the Ford Motor Company is there. We know Bill Ford's going to be here, Bill Ford Jr., uh, and he'll be talking, the, the chairman of Ford Motor Company. Crowds are gathering. What we're seeing also are people who used to live here or even do live here now coming out to take a look. And there, sadly, are people who weren't able to get tickets. And they were talking to us today about growing up in the neighborhood, seeing the train station, riding the trains, and then seeing the station go into disrepair and now come to this. And so there's a deep emotional attachment and listen to what a couple of the people that we talked to this morning had to say about it. It was so cheap and it was, you know, affordable and that, and uh, it was really nice. It was, uh, and I have a lot of memories of the train station. There used to be a white castle right there in the corner, too. How excited are you about seeing this? Well, you know, I'm so excited. I don't have a ticket. I'm not going to get in nothing, but just to be here, just to, it's just so exciting for me. I said I had to come early. I had just to walk around, get the good feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. It, it just feels so good. I tried to get tickets, but it sold out in, in minutes. And I came out, came out in hopes of like being able to see from Roosevelt Park or being able. I just I want to see the rededication of this building. They have already started to come out. The riggers are up on the uh, the stanchions here, putting the lighting up, getting the speakers up. They have been rehearsing all of the scripts. They've been announcing uh, Eminem and, and some of the other people that are going to be speaking out here, um, getting ready for what promises to be an exceptionally memorable night here in the city of Detroit. In fact, in many ways, it's the rebirth of the city. We talked about it previously, but, you know, most recently, Detroit's been going north-south in development. This makes it go east-west. This changes the game, and there is a lot of emotion behind that, and we'll be talking about that throughout the rest of the day here. So for now, reporting live from Roosevelt Park on Michigan Avenue, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Oh, uh, enjoy the day. we should get to now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but just shows how big this is. A yeah. concert like this, we just don't see things like this around here. So really it's don't. it's an exciting night. Local 4 is your exclusive home to watch it. So if you don't have the tickets, don't worry about it. You can take it all in right here on Local 4 and Local 4 Plus. Our coverage gets underway at 8 p.m. tonight. Elsewhere this noon, an update to a suspected drunk driving accident in Canton. We've learned that 37-year-old Ypsilanti man was going the wrong way down Michigan Avenue when he hit a 32-year-old woman from Belleville. Police say that man has a history of alcohol-related offenses. The crash happened around 12.20 this morning. First responders took both drivers to the hospital where the woman died. Police are still investigating exactly what happened. Over in South Lyon, a school bus driver is currently under investigation after a student said that they smelled like alcohol that happened in Sayre Elementary. This says 
it says that in a statement sent out to parents that the student wrote a note to the principal who reported it to the director of transportation and the superintendent. The superintendent went to meet the driver at the next location, a field trip to Kensington Metro Park, and taken to an alcohol testing facility. The driver is now suspended pending the results. Another turn of events in the case of a man whose Zoom court appearance went viral. You probably have seen this. This was Corey Harris calling into his hearing for driving with a suspended license. And of course, he was driving when he called in. Harris's bond was revoked. He went to jail for two days. Then there were reports saying there was a mix up, saying Harris's license was supposed to have been reinstated in January 2022. But in court yesterday, the judge saying all of those reports inaccurate. He has never had a Michigan license, ever, and has never had a license in the other 49 states and commonwealths that form up this great union. He has never had a license. In point of fact, when they suspended his license, and what people don't understand, when they suspended his license in Saginaw, they don't suspend the license. They suspend the privilege to drive in the state. That's the confusing part. And if you just understanding how could he have it suspended if he didn't have a license? Well, it's the privilege to drive, as the judge explained there. Uh, his attorney promises the matter will be taken care of and he's due back in court August 7th. So we'll see. A tornado in Livonia taking the life of a two year old boy and landed his mother who was right next to him in the hospital. Both the child and mom were laying down when a massive tree came crashing through the roof of their house. They were pinned to the bed and it took more than 25 firefighters to get them out. At last check, the mother was listed in critical condition in the hospital. Port Huron is cleaning up after severe storms hit there too. The city says that multiple roads are closed because of fallen trees, debris, and down power lines. DTE is working to de-energize and remove those fallen lines. The Detroit Riverfront Conservancy's former CFO, William Smith, formally arraigned on federal charges. We caught him trying to leave the courthouse yesterday afternoon a bit incognito. He's charged with bank fraud and wire fraud for the alleged embezzlement of almost $40 million. Federal prosecutors say he started to embezzle those funds from ch the charitable organization as early as November of 2012. He's due back in court June 26th for a preliminary exam. The superintendent of Wayne Westland Community Schools is currently on leave, and now Jennifer Curry is acting superintendent for John Ninian. The board placed him on leave after a closed session last night. The exact reason, though, is unclear. The school put out a statement saying, in part, the Wayne Westland Community Schools Board of Education voted to place Superintendent John Ninian on administrative leave pending the outcome of further discussions. Today, President Biden is among world leaders honoring the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. From the American Cemetery in Normandy, Jay Gray explains the importance of today's date. Dignitaries and leaders from around the world gathering here today, but it's the heroes that they've come to honor who are clearly the most important guests on this special anniversary. The men who stormed the beaches, the fighter pilots, those on board the ships just off the shoreline, the veterans who've returned and those marked by all of these headstones, the ones that never left. They line up in formation, though most can't march or stand at attention anymore. Still, they move through this battlefield turned graveyard memorial, a visit that brings with it memories of their first trip here 80 years ago. I, I, I'm reliving walking in on D-Day. Staff Sergeant Jake Larson landed on Omaha Beach with the first wave of Allied soldiers, his unit peppered with machine gun fire as they scrambled to combat positions. Larson somehow making it across the sand without taking a hit. How do you explain something like that? And these, my, my buddies are, are buried here. I, I'm 101 years old. It won't be long and I'll be joining them. One of the reasons for many, it's so important to be here. A chance to say one final goodbye and to honor those who never left. 
we lost we lost so many men. It's unbelievable, and uh, the young people should know about this, and they really don't. So uh, I just I had to say something. So they share their stories, take pictures. Though most will tell you they don't care much for all of the attention, and even though they are. Many refuse the label of hero. They got my hero, hero at all. I, 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 it, 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 the, 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 those guys that sacrificed their life are the heroes. I'm the result of the, be, the their being heroes. Truth is, they're all heroes, remembered for their service, courage, and sacrifice. You know, what an honor it's been to spend some time with these men this week. And I was struck by what one of the D-Day survivors told me, looking out and pointing at the crosses that line this cemetery. He said, most of these guys, they were 17, 18, 19 years old. They never had families. Uh, they made it possible, though, for me to have a family, to live a long life because of their sacrifice, the sacrifice that's honored today. Jay Gray, NBC News, at the American Cemetery in Normandy, France.